Hello everyone, it's me, Jenny SRP, and I'm back for another COVID update. <laughs> so, since last time we spoke, I have been featured in the local newspaper, <laughs> and I actually caught COVID again in January. <laughs> Hello, it's me. I have suspected COVID again. I tested negative, but my roommate slash ex-partner tested positive and we have the same symptoms. Um, I've been pretty sick since Wednesday with the same symptoms I had back in early March and the end of April. Uh, but I'm okay. I have an oximeter, my oxygen's fine. Um, I felt a little better this morning, so that's good. Uh, I just am down again now. Um, we're okay, but I wanna tell you, you can catch it again. You can get reinfected. This might be my third third time might be my second it depends on uh, what they find out can happen within an eight week period um, so be safe and uh, just act as if you have the virus and you can spread it because some people still don't believe it's real see y'all later <laughs> So anyone who's thinking they've had COVID and they now should be immune and have antibodies, um, it's likely those antibodies don't last very long or aren't very effective against the variants. I do suspect that I got a variant because I know exactly the chain of infection that happened in January, uh, mid-January, so I think it was the 18th. I know exactly who it came from and who they were in contact with and we had symptoms within 24 hours. My roommate uh, had a pretty, um, I would say moderate, but it was, was pretty severe. He was very, very ill for two weeks and I had the same symptoms. Uh, it, the severity for me wasn't quite as bad, but I also have immune dysfunction, so it's hard to tell the effects and I still have symptoms and ongoing sequelae and he is fully recovered so as you remember my antibody tests did come back negative back from my test in September which means that after nine months I did not have antibodies. I was pretty sick for about 10 days in January and I recovered quicker and some of my symptoms that I had ongoing from last year actually were better so my headaches got better and I have not had any more rashes, but my chest pressure and my heart are still having symptoms, although they did not get worse. One of the symptoms I got that I did not have the first time around was the stomach aches and stomach cramping. I had definitely stomach aches throughout the two weeks that I was pretty ill. I had temperature fluctuations, but I did not have a registered fever on a thermometer. My roommate had drenching sweats every night for two weeks and I only really had night sweats the first night so on the Tuesday night and then I kind of just had you know the flashes of fever and chills and things like that. I had sore throat, I had blood in my sinus like I did the first time, very severe fatigue, muscle fatigue and exhaustion, very weak. I had a wheezy cough but like I said, within about two weeks, I was feeling much better. I was sitting up at, I only missed a few days of sitting up at my desk to do some work. So I I think there must be some uh, antibody or uh, T cell memory response going on that helps me recover better. And like I said, I have no rash and, and my headaches are better from the long COVID that I had previously. So I think there is actually a chance that if you get reinfected, it might 
give your immune system a bit of a boost to say, hey, we recognize that we can resolve these, this infection and thus the symptoms that follow up. Having said that, though, I still have symptoms, including um, kidney aches. If I'm going grocery shopping or going for a walk and I start to get tired, my kidneys will still ache and my heart inflammation and chest pressure is still daily, especially when I lie down at night. Um, and I will get it checked out eventually. I just have a lot going on in my the rest of my life right now and um, I'm not interested in battling the medical system to get attention because it's very clear from other COVID patients reports that there is no real help medically in the system right now. Although $1.5 billion has been set up in the United States to study post-COVID sequelae which I feel like is an unnecessarily complicated term for what we already have as post-viral illness or post-viral chronic fatigue or post-viral complications. But I know that this funding will help all the other post-viral complications and chronic illness as well. So I'm looking forward to see if anything comes out of that. I'm assuming they're going to find some diagnostic markers through nano needle or micro needle testing either in the skin or in blood serum or ways that we haven't been diagnosing illness before. Because right now if you go to a doctor and get their general rat lab tests, as I've said in previous videos, most people are going to come back saying nothing is wrong even though they still feel very ill and are suffering. This is not a new thing, we've seen this a lot with cancer patients who recover fully from cancer but have long-lasting, lifelong lasting sometimes chronic symptoms that they have to learn to manage and live with. This isn't to say that people can't make a full recovery, we just don't know why some people don't make or some people make a full recovery and some don't. And full disclosure, I work for the Optimum Health Clinic in London, which works with chronic illness patients. And right now, the focus is shifting more towards long COVID since we're getting a lot of new patients there. But I don't work within the clinic in the clinician's practice. I don't know what the um, specific methods and protocols are, although I've been a patient on and off for the last 10 years, I just really do a lot of media work and um, and sharing things in the media. So my conversations on my experiences with healing and managing chronic illness come as a patient and not from an employee of the Optimum Health Clinic because I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day clinician stuff. So what I want to say first about my article in the Bath Chronicle, <laughs> it's funny because this was just, like pretty much just after we moved to Bath. Um, uh, it was okay. I thought I was going to be one of many people who were interviewed about long COVID. I had no idea I was going to have my face on the front page. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like a little bit embarrassing, but um, what I will say is if you talk to any media about your experience, just know that it's never going to be a perfect representation of yourself or what your experience is. It's always going to go through the lens of the reporter. But she did a pretty good job of relaying what I wanted to get across. Number one, which is that it's very hard for chronic illness patients to get med medical attention. And two, especially in COVID times when you're told not to go anywhere or do anything if you have symptoms. That's very challenging for people who have symptoms for months and months and months after COVID because you're you're like, well, I have symptoms, but can I go here or there if I know I don't have the infection? It's very, it's very challenging for people. So I hope that maybe reached out to a few people within the bath community and um, helped people feel less alone. Um, I don't know if I have much more to share. I am moving again next month, so <laughs> my life is topsy-turvy right now. I want to say please check out the work from the Open Medicine Foundation. Listen to people with ME-CFS and other chronic conditions like fibromyalgia. We've been living with and managing, for me it's been 15 years that I've been trying to learn to live with and manage my chronic illness and actively trying to recover too. So I don't want to say that I've given up on recovery. I'm just being realistic about what I've tried and what my improvements have been and I want you to keep hope knowing that anything can happen but also be realistic day to day on what you can do because the more honest you are and present you are with yourself in what you can do and what you need 
the more effective you're going to be at being able to meet your own needs and take the action that you need to take to take care of yourself and be honest with the people around you about what you can and can't do and start to manage your energy envelope and spoons if you prefer the spoon theory some people hate it some people love it i personally love it so check out the spoon theory if you need to find a way of communicating your um boundaries with people around you as well now my kidneys are starting to ache so i'm gonna end this video but i'm sending you all lots of love i know this time is physically mentally emotionally challenging for everyone and we're having to be resilient on unprecedented challenges so i want to just acknowledge that and say thank you for watching thank you for connecting with me the people that have left comments and have sent me messages encouraged me to come back and give you a little update um, you can get infected again, so keep taking precautions. Get your vaccine when it's offered to you, or else hide away for the rest of your life, I guess. <laughs> Listen to good news sources, which means people who have studied these fields of epidemiology and, you know, biomedicine and listen to people that have spent their lives and their passion and their time and energy, blood, sweat, and tears, working on this stuff and giving you the information. I know sometimes it's very hard to to sift through which information is digestible to a consumer, but there are outlets, especially on YouTube, where they interview people who are able to explain things at a certain base level that are experts in their field. So let's cut out misinformation and try to share good sources, but also share your personal experience. Leave a comment below letting me know what you've been through with COVID and long COVID. I'm now on 13 months um, and I know the first two years are crucial for recovery. So do take very, very good care of yourself and don't push it and be realistic and honest with yourself about what you need. And the best way to do that is to get present. If you haven't practiced mindfulness before or really learned how to tune into your body, this is a good time to learn how to do it. Sending you lots of love. Talk to you later. Bye. Just wanna quickly document the flushing that's going on with the niacin. Um, you can compare, my hand is white. There's a little bit of flushing on my not the fingers, but I look like I'm sunburned. This usually happens about four or five hours after I take the niacin in the morning. It's very hot and a little bit itchy, but it, for me it feels kind of good. <laughs> it only lasts about 45 minutes to an hour, um, and apparently your body will, oh look, you can see it more with the patching there, get used to it um, as you develop more of a tolerance to niacin, but it's definitely the most interesting supplement reaction I've had so far. See y'all later. Don't do that. <laughs>